Moving right along to our fourth fight on the night. It is scheduled for three at three minute rounds and it remains in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the short line, Buick and GMC red corner. Please welcome to the cage, Derek Schmidt. All right, welcome back. And guys, after that last fight, every fight now will be judged by that one, by two debut fighters. And again, we've got another one coming. And Derek Schmidt in his MMA debut, talking with J-Train Gonzalez about this kid. He said he's a beast, Todd. He said this kid is a beast. And he will, he will bring everything to it. He doesn't expect the lights to be a bit of a problem. And I know his opponent is three and three in MMA, so he comes in with quite a bit more experience. You know, we saw Justin Mitchell. So, uh, Justin Mitchell in fight number two. Hard to remember now after that last <laughs> fight, but Mitchell looked fantastic. In fight two, four, which is this, six and eight. Every second show, every second fight on the show, the guys from Trials uh, uh, will be in one of the fights, will be in, in the red corner. So, we're going to keep an eye on these guys. You know, uh, they started off killer tonight, and I you just got the feeling they're going to have a big night, the four of them. JR, you look at the matchmaking here, and Becca Cisneros has done some great matchmaking, and tonight it's just started off like a firecracker. Outstanding, and one of the sort of unfortunate things is there's so many people to choose from because so many people want to fight, but we're unfortunately down on the number of shows that we can have. But it does make for great shows because you can almost go out and cherry pick who you want on your car. True. Robin, you, you travel around, you see a lot of promotions, you're involved in this sport, you see a lot of, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever the case may yeah. be. Sparta Sports and Entertainment, there is such quality here on the yeah. fighters that are rising up the ranks. Yeah, and, and that's why I'm coming here no matter what. If I am if I can on the weekend, I'm going to come here between Jeff, between uh, Becca, between you guys, between the commission here, the fighters. It's a beautiful place for combat. And Big Mo. And his opponent fighting out of the Fowler Chevrolet Blue Corner. Please welcome Michael Lambert. And Michael Lambert comes in, not only 3-3 three and three in MMA, 2-0 and oh in boxing. So has those hands to go along with it. A very well-rounded fighter who can go to the ground, he can fight, he likes to use the legs a little bit. So when you're a debut fighter like Derek Schmidt, you're going into the cage with somebody that's had six fights. Not one or two, but six, JR. Yeah, and uh, let's check out the tail of the tape here. We've got Schmidt coming in a little bit, the elder 29 versus the 21-year-old Lambert. 5'9 for Schmidt, so a bit of a height advantage for Lambert. Of course, they both made 145 pounds. Debut is what they're saying well, here. And let's, and let's correct that because kickboxing is 3-3, three and three. There JR, we go. my bad. There we go. All right, and freestyle for Schmidt versus stand-up for Lambert. Schmidt came in second, and Schmidt came in hot. <laughs> Schmidt happens. <laughs> Had to throw it in there. Ladies like and gentlemen, this featherweight MMA <laughs> bout is brought to you by Precision Security Services. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the short line at Buick and GMC Red Corner from Fort Collins, Colorado, representing Trials MMA, Derek Schmidt. Here's my hometown, Fort Collins, Colorado. And his opponent, fighting out of the Fowler Chevrolet Blue Corner, from Arvada, Colorado, representing DCO MMA, Michael Lambert. DCO MMA, they also have Mitch Sabold, who is in our co-main event, Bare Knuckle. They know fighting out of that gym, man. They know fighting all different aspects of the sports. Yeah, well, we DCO, great gym. Go ahead. Excuse me, we see Stephen Paparaki in the corner, his wife, Catherine Paparaki, won the Queen of Sparta tournament. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they know fighting. Very quickly, if anybody listening has, does not know what the King and Queen of Sparta is, you win a boxing match, then a kickboxing fight. match, and then an MMA fight on the same night. It's a wonderful tournament, and I'm gonna be here for the next King and Queen of Sparta. Excellent. We were listening and talking to Steven before the fight. He was talking about the up and coming fighters that he has, including the two on this card. He's got more coming, including some brothers. So he was very excited tonight prior to this fight. And he's got interest in this this one for sure. Schmidt was really, really moving on wild angles as he was dropping underneath to attack the single low. And, and he was able to get it, and now he's fighting from this position. Watch, he has grabbed that wrist. Now, earlier I mentioned Ryan Schultz knocked out a very good friend of mine in the IFL. That was one of the approaches he took hand behind the back to lock the one side. How about Lambert working his way back up? At, after, that was good stuff there. Yeah, very good work. You know, Comes up with a knee. 
it might sound somewhat obvious. Oh, and, and that guillotine now, that is a legitimate threat, and as and uh, uh, Schmidt realized it, and that's why he separated and backed out. They're back into space, and Schmidt is ducking underneath for the hips one more time. Yeah, Lambert coming with a series of combinations, some body shots, and when Schmidt ducked down, one of those caught him. Lambert's getting the read on that duck. Yeah, yeah he is. He's not, he, well, it worked, There's the right? single leg. Yeah, it worked. The low single is a fascinating attack. Um, when you drop down low, you can use your shoulder to hyperextend the knee as you drive forward. But yes, he, uh, JR, you're right. Um, uh, Lambert is picking up on the path of the head throughout all of that. That was a sweet dive. He's gonna have to fight to the top, and he does. Schmidt trying to remain control right now and got some action on that head and neck. Head and arm. Boy, yep. he, the, the hand-eye coordination to pick that ankle as quick as he did in that takedown was impressive. So that head and arm was there. It it, it created a reaction, but, but Lambert in With the, the red and black yeah, uh, gained the reversal. And so now you see this sort of modified rubber guard up high. Lambert can pass this to the side he is passing. And so, you can see both of these guys know what to do when they get on the bat. That wrestling experience you can see from both fighters. So Schmidt is going to look for an omoplata from this position. Uh, but what he's got to do, so he's using his foot to, to crunch the head down, and he's going to try to take his left leg, yes, and create a triangle to an omoplata. Oh, an yeah. armbar as well. Yeah. So the omoplata is a shoulder attack. He pops his head out, and he'll try to grab the far hip and pull his man towards him. Look at the cranking, but what a great job done by Mike Lambert trying to stay in there. The torque that that elbow and shoulder were taking is able to get and recover into a better position now and works himself free. Yeah, some cool stuff from Schmidt and the patience of Lambert is what, but Schmidt has a great guard. He's gonna fight his way back to guard, and now he's using the same approach on the other side. Whenever we see this kind of climb, people say rubber guard, uh, which it's a modified high guard. Eddie Bravo's system will reference often, um, but that was a modified high guard he was using to attack the shoulder. JR, high level stuff by a couple of debut fighters. It really was, and the primary difference that I saw between the two fighters, both great in the exchanges, both very calm, both knew when to relax, both knew when to be fast. But the reason that I'm going to give the round to Schmidt is because he was the one that seemed to be primarily attacking. Lambert had his moments. I think Schmidt had more moments. Yeah, that would be a tough one to call. Now, so we talked about this. Watch Schmidt. Low, 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 way outside, but it's he like drives a in. Yeah, and it's an interesting one. There are many coaches that would say that is air quotes wrong. <laughs> it worked twice, right? It worked <laughs> twice. And often when you're training with high level coaches these days, they'll say your opponent will do X. And you might ask, well, what if he doesn't? We start to train to react to our opponent doing the quote correct thing. Sometimes what you call incorrect is just enough variety to make it work. And so it was not incorrect because it worked twice. The right technique is the one that works in That's the moment. That's 100% correct. <laughs> well, great start tonight. This is our fourth fight out of a scheduled 11, and we have seen a fast and furious start to this one. Now, if you're Lambert, you want to make Schmidt drop a knee or kick that head when he does, right? You know, if you think he's going to drop down and, and attack that low single, he's made it work twice. Watch for it. And front knee, the left knee, drive the left knee in when that happens. Yeah, and see if he can catch him going down. And uh, Lightning hit, quick. Right? Lightning quick. And a better penetration into the hip area. Great defense there. He goes for it again. Now looking at Lambert getting control of that head and neck. And when you get control of that, you can get into position. Schmidt didn't mind that one bit. Schmidt wanted this on the ground to create a guard, and now he's creating a half guard, right? And he's controlling the head. Those punches are short. Now that's called deep half, but now he's getting hit. And that's what Lambert is doing everything correct here. You've got a guy who wants to play guard. Don't worry about the position. Just be sound and punch with whatever appendage is free. <laughs> And, and that's the danger there of trying to get it to the ground and hoping that you have the advantage of your opponent there. When you take a look at Mike Lambert, he's done all the right things, and he yep. stayed busy all the way through. Yep. And Schmidt did the right thing according to his strategy, which is 
initiate a ground fight, even if Lambert ends up on top, you believe you'll be able to reverse it. He was incorrect because Lambert understood that was the approach and Lambert switched to bludgeoning instead of grappling. And that's really, really the difference here. And landing about three or four hammer fists from that spot and that attack. Schmidt trying to drive forward. Got to be careful for the yeah. arm bar so here. If he doesn't get this, if he gets the arm bar, he wins. If he doesn't, he'll end up on the bottom. So it's a bit of a risk. And you're right, if he does, it, it still hasn't been decided. Okay, and there you see it, right? Yep. This is the risk reward scenario, and you've got to be aware of it. But, he, okay, now we're on the bottom. That's okay. Again, we talk about acceptance. This happened. The goal was let in by the goaltender. The goalie shakes it off and gets back to work. Now, and with a minute three left in this round, what happens next? And so he did reverse it. Now we're going to look for a triangle here from Schmidt. And, or Schmidt's. Oh, it was there for him. And it slid off. But yeah, and Lambert shucked it off. The angle of Lambert's hip and shoulder shucked off the attack. So all of that reversing. Lambert rolled for the armbar, didn't get it. He got reversed. Schmidt had his moment, and Lambert ends up on top again. Schmidt's certainly not uncomfortable on bottom. A, a lot of fighters can do that. He looks a little bit weathered right now yeah. and tired for sure. The body language. He's if, put a lot out there. If I'm Lambert, I know this guy's going to go. Dr yeah. And you're looking to knee that head as it comes in. But good on Schmidt. Can Schmidt get the takedown right now? And he's in a position where his head's a little bit in trouble. He's got to continue to drive forward. At the left ankle, right? But I mean, with 10 seconds left, you just ride this one out. Don't get hurt. Don't, you know, don't use too much energy. Those body shots won't hurt you too bad. Ride it out and start again. Well, another interesting fight as we heard JR score the last round. JR, a second round, a bit different. This time I'm going to give the round to Schmidt. Lambert had one thing in mind and he was fully, absolutely, 100% committed to that. Whether it went his way or not, he tried to stick to it. Schmidt had an answer for that and was able to be effective with his ground and pound. Nothing made the referee think about stopping it but definitely something that made it so that you could only really see that round going one yeah. way. And there's Lambert on top landing the punches. And, you know, in this moment, Schmidt with the red gloves is trying to get to the top position, but Lambert just staying calm and just picking the spot. It's the ear, no problem, we'll hit the ear. It's, it's the temple, no problem, we'll hit the temple. It's behind the ear, no problem, we'll hit behind the ear. That's intelligent fighting when you've got a guy trying to submit you, just keep your weight heavy, is, and any way you can control his body using all parts of your body but one hand, with that free hand, you bludgeon him. And as I'm looking into the corners in between this third and final round, the fresher fighter to me is Mike Lambert. I looked at Derek Schmidt and looked very labor over in the corner. We'll see what that transitions into big. Lambert with the red trunks and the blue gloves. Lambert is looking for the drop down. Watch for the knee here. Look how low his base is. Hands up, please. Now, if, Hands up, please. If I'm Schmidt, I want to throw a head kick. It's the last thing he expects. He's expecting you to try to take him down. That's you have good. to throw the, the least expected thing. Both fighters, I think, you get into this third round on a debut fight. Deep water for both. And you can see from their strikes, not enough on it like they, we saw in the first and second round. And a fight where they both have, to, have had to expend a tremendous amount of energy. Yeah, yeah, hard grab, heavy grappling fight for sure. Couple shots right there by Mike Lambert. And he gets the low There it is, again. He, yeah, and that one was about timing. And you know, when people watch him, for, uh, to fight him in the future, they'll be watching for that low single. And I'll tell you, he'll have something else. He'll use your expectation of the low single to attack in a different way. But he now is on top, he's got two minutes. The job now is not some fancy omoplata. The job now is not, you know, uh, throw a Hail Mary and hope you get it. The job is, and this is an old school position before submission scenario. No matter what we do, we do not give up our dominance. Well, the one thing he's done is gone back to what's worked. And when it, when it works, you got to keep doing it until your opponent stops it. And, and low hips here, heavy hips, head in the sternum, and you control the inside of the arms, and you try to pin, so you see his right hip is pinned. Yep. We want to pin his left shoulder. Diagonal, uh, contralateral control. And so you see now, uh, Lambert's left shoulder is up. Now we attack the head and arm choke. He'll, that head and arm choke will force him to put his left arm to the mat. And when he does, 
we'll either pass, we'll get our hips high and we'll pass, or we'll pin him again. And you work this game until you fatigue him enough that you can start dropping punches or elbows. And JR, this is exactly what Schmidt needed to do because he was not the fresher of the fighter. He took it where his strength was. 100%. That head and arm attack is there, but he's used it to get the mount. See, the threat of the head and arm choke, he used to get, I believe, the mount. It's hard to see, yeah, now he's in the mount. A lot of pressure yeah. as well. Yeah, and now, now you don't know if you won round one. JR gave him round one, yep. but you don't know if you won round one. But what you don't want is to get reversed, and he's about to, and he does. And with 35 seconds left, let's see what Lambert can do with that as he's been fighting back all round long, came in the third round as the fresher fighter, but Sanchez was able to get her, make that Schmidt was able to get it to the ground. Great back and forth fight. When Schmidt watches this one, win or lose, that reversal will be something he'll go back and think, I can't give up that position in a third round of a tight fight. But at the same time, you don't fade just because you did. You continue to fight and you see if you can come up with a single and he does. That might be enough to win him the round. As he gets up to it, he gets up to the ground. These two fighters gave everything in their debut fight and right oh, at the oh, yeah. bell, put Lambert on his backside. This one's gonna be very interesting. However, the judges saw this fight, JR. Yeah, Lambert, uh, he had about 30 seconds of control, but it was the end of the round, which is the last thing that the judges see as uh, his opponent, Schmidt, was able to control the majority of the round. There was a few peppering strikes in that round. Basically, round three came down to control time and positioning, and it was absolutely Schmidt that had that. But I give the fight uh, Lambert two rounds to one. Yeah, and it was, it was a very, very close one. Two coaches, all the best friends, all the families, and both <laughs> fighters are going to say, I won that fight, man. I won this fight. <laughs> yes, we won indeed. this fight. But it was a very, very close fight. It could easily go either direction. A well-matched fight, man. Fun Credit fight to, to Becca. You know, to match these fights in such a way that it comes down to final moments in every exchange and the amount of heart and will that you can have in these moments you see there as he's getting his his uh, forearm pinned and a couple of strikes are coming in from Lambert it's uh it's a tough back and forth fight both guys should be proud of this fight no matter who wins it yeah two great gyms trials for Derek Schmidt and DCO MMA for Mike Lambert and you saw why Steven was so excited about his fighter tonight because they put on a great show we've seen evenly matched fights and really some some unbelievable finishes and this one went three rounds of continual action yeah, <laughs> it's it's easy for us to say now that we're old, but these kids are gonna <laughs> sleep well tonight. You know, you know what I mean? That's hard, hard work. And, and when we watch at home, you see these exchanges and sometimes you'll see a big punch, bink, and you're like, oh man, that'll hurt the next day. These guys' hips hurt, their lower backs hurt, their rib, the, the muscles between the ribs hurt. When you exert this hard for this long against another body doing the same, it hurts the next day all over for both these two guys. We heard yeah. the unofficial numbers from JR and how he saw it. Let's get it up to Big Mo for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three full rounds, we go to your judge's scorecard for the official decision. Judge number one sees about 29 to 28, 27, Schmidt. Our third judge sees at 29 to 28, Lambert. And our second judge sees about 29 to 28, declaring your winner by split decision, Derek Schmidt. Saw it like JR, and I, I like that decision. I thought it was a very close fight, and I'm not surprised it's a split decision. Let's see what Mo has to say with the winner, because that was a that was a good fight. Both fighters can take something out of it. 100%. Both should look at this one like a win and a loss. Both should look at it as a learning experience, but both should be proud of this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by your winner, our winner, Mr. Derek Schmidt. First off, Derek, congratulations on a great fight. A lot of ground game, a lot of wrestling, a lot of jujitsu, but you initiated it. You went for the takedown at the start of basically all three rounds. Did you know that you want to take this fight to the ground? Is that where you feel the most comfortable? I mean, I was going to take it wherever, wherever was open. I, I, I like that. Now, coming from a great gym, obviously a well-educated gym, you seem pretty well-rounded as a fighter. Do you feel comfortable in the stand-up game? I, I, I see that you... Again, you were delivering some good shots and you maintained control the whole fight. You were listening to your corner well. I'm just curious, did you have a game plan going into this fight? 
I'm not a game plan. No. Now, I'm curious, moving forward in your career, what can we expect from you next as you, as you move ahead? I don't know. I'm gonna go back home. Spend some time with my dogs. Be besides your dog. Get back in the gym in like a week. Now, besides your dog, sounds like you have some fans here tonight. Anyone that you want to thank? My whole family, especially my girlfriend. She's been uh, awesome, making me meals, making me go run late at night, you know. Awesome. Well, great fight, Derek. One more time for your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Derek Schmidt. That right there is gassed fighter, boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's like, hey, man, I fight. I don't talk that much, and there's not only nothing wrong with that, there's an authenticity to him. He's like, hey, I came out here, I fought, you saw it. I'm gonna go home and see my dogs. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. were there. You were there. <laughs>